You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and um, I'm recording from home today. Usually, I am very blessed to have the opportunity to record out of the Everlast Studios in New York City. Um, but as you know, things are changing quite a bit. Uh, a lot of things have changed in the industry with the COVID-19 virus. So I want to talk about that. I want to take some time today to talk about COVID-19, to talk about some of the issues and how they are affecting the fitness community and uh, and what we need to and should be doing about it. So uh, first thing is, um, you know, this is a highly contagious um, virus. It's highly contagious. Uh, yes, most of us are going to be okay. And I know, um, here's what happened. And I, let me just run through this with you. I live in New York City, and New York City and New York State has passed a mandate. And that mandate says that all restaurants, bars, cafes, and gyms should close. Now, with that said, I have three gyms in New York City. I've got a partner in uh, in all three of those gyms named Mark Miller, and we had to make a decision as to whether or not we were going to stay open or if we were going to try to slide under the radar because at the time it was less than 50 people could still gather and we put limits on how many people can be in our gym at one time. And I started getting a lot of emails and a lot of text messages from people that don't currently train at my facility that say, hey, my gyms are closed down. Can I bring my clients to your facility and train out of? And, you know, I'm thinking, uh, cha-ching, right? Like, this is a great opportunity. I had to hit the pause button on that. And like everything else in a business, and if, if, if you're a business that hasn't put focus on what your core values are, then I'm going to use this as an example uh, as to why the core values are such an important component of your business and why you should add those core values into your business plan. And um, it really goes back to this. Does staying open align with our core values as a business? And so when I looked at it and I said our first core value is safety first. Safety first. Now, when when it comes to this for the trainers, that means you are a competent trainer, you are taking care of your client, you're spotting your client, you are cueing your client, you are making sure that whatever your client is doing is safe. Um, and with this COVID-19 virus, there was no way to assure that what you were doing with your clients could be safe and it had nothing to do with exercise. It had to do with somebody potentially getting the virus. And you know, I was, uh, you know, I'm thinking about that, you know, people need to exercise and people need to work out and had a phone call or a conversation at the gym with a guy. And he was like, yeah, my friend, no comorbidities at all. Uh, 33 years old, young, healthy, fit, and is in the intensive care unit because of this COVID-19 virus. And I thought, oh my gosh, can you imagine we stayed open and somebody got the COVID-19 while at my gym, independent training spot, so that was a that was a big deal. I had to think about safety first, and 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 so it went against my core value for safety first. But that wasn't it. It's also to optimize fitness and health. That's that's another thing. That's a core value at what we do at independent training spot. Optimize fitness and health as a core value. It makes it very difficult for me to ensure that we're bolstering fitness and health if we don't do our part to blunt the curve. So that's two against uh, staying open, even if we could limit it to less than 50 people. Now, as of the time of this recording, it has changed to less than five. But this is really to go back to, like, why do we do what we do? Because there are other people out there who are thinking they're going to fly under the radar and stay open and make a few more short-term dollars. Um, but I'm not sure it's going to be long-term game. So, um I'm going to continue. Uh, mutual respect is another core value. And in an email to all of my trainers, I said, uh, it seems that it would be disrespectful, selfish, and inconsiderate to continue to be open and chance increasing the spread of COVID-19 after the governor's mandate. So mutual respect 
Um, I couldn't stay open. It goes against my core value. Staying open when people are saying, hey, man, I'll give you money. I want to come and I want to train my clients out of your venue. Um, and yet we don't know who's infected and who's not. And so out of mutual respect, um, no, I can't. I can't. We're going to close it down. Shared space and shared education. Uh, we do have a shared space. And we do share education. It's wonderful to watch trainers train and other trainers look at them and say, hey, can you teach me what you do? Can I share a session with you or split session? So I'll do one with you. You do one with me. I want to learn from you. And this is the moment right now, this moment right now, to educate our clients and other trainers on the importance of blending the curb and holding off training until greater safety for everyone can be ensured. And right now it cannot be ensured. So... Making money is the goal of every business, but what I could not do is go against our core values and stay open. Even if I could fly under the radar, even if nobody would ever, ever know what's going on. But here's the other thing that you got to think about. If you're out there wondering whether or not you're going to continue to stay open after it's been mandated that you close down, um, I'm going to say this, uh, if, if, it changed. Everything changed with social media, right? So anybody can look to call you out now. They they don't care whether or not you stay open. They just want to say something and call you out so they can get the aha, I got you. That's a, that's a lot about the society we live in now is the aha, I got you society. So we have to be careful that we don't put ourselves in that position to be aha, got by people who don't care whether or not we're open. But with that said, it shouldn't matter. Because think about this. If you're staying open because you want to make a few more dollars, maybe you get a few sessions in. I don't know if it's worth the long-term issue if people find out that you're open. And you know, if you happen to be um, ground zero for um, uh, some type of uh, outbreak that's continuing and you find out that one thing that a lot of people had in common, it was your gym, right? So that's, that's scary to think about. You don't want to be in that position. And, um, and here's the other thing, just if, if you've been mandated to close and you stay open and people get sick while they come to your gym, then you could be both legally and financially responsible for some of those, um, sicknesses that have come about after you've been told to close down. Now, not everybody has been closed. Not everybody, the, the, the whole United States gym systems have not been closed down. But it doesn't mean that they won't. Um, and it's very likely that for a couple of weeks, they all will be at some point. So, look, we all got to make money. We're, we're, all, we're all in trouble. Listen, I got, I got rent to pay. Uh, my, my landlords, uh, they're, they're all going to be asking me for money uh, for each of the locations that I have. It's going to be tough because I, d I don't have it. I don't have it. Uh, I'm not going to have it uh, at the end of this month. I didn't make enough in the first half of the month to cover full expenses. And then what about next month? Are we even going to be open next month? Are people still going to have jobs next month? Are the people that are had jobs, are they going to keep training next month? Or uh, in the grand scheme of priorities, will personal training fall on the list for a lot of people? And that's a, that's a real question. There's a real concern with people. I understand the concern. I, I know I have another business... Uh, where we have employees and we just hired several employees and we just hired uh, a new general manager. And we're going to try to make sure that all of our management um, can still get paid throughout however long this crisis is until we need to furlough and, you know, not pay our employees. And then we have our part-time employees that work hourly. And so what we've done for this week is we've offered them pay for half their hours this week. So hours that didn't work, but we offered them pay for half their hours. And then starting next week, they won't be getting paid for hours that they're not working, but we're just trying to help them out. And it, and, and we're in a position where we can for, for this week pay a, a little bit and help out. Um, is it going to be enough for them? I, I don't know. I don't know their situation. Um, it's a lot of nervousness going on uh, with a lot of people. And 
you know, we just, we just have to be as wise as we can be. And uh, a lot of people are going on to, to online training, which I think is wonderful. Going into online training is wonderful. Uh, if you haven't done so, there is a podcast that will be launched either uh, right before this podcast or right after this podcast that I did with Karen McMahon. And she was great because she offered um, free counseling for any personal trainer who wanted help on how they can start an online and virtual training business. So I thought that was really, really wonderful. So I had her my, as my first guest on the podcast. Uh, never had a guest on the podcast before, but I thought a lot of you might find it really valuable to listen to her explain what she's done. And she's been doing it for a long time. She's a successful business, multiple trainers that are working under her. Um, yeah, so to get an opportunity to learn from her what she's doing. Um, one of the things that that we're doing is uh, we're offering a, a free workout for something that my partner at Recover, his name is Aaron Drogazeski, and uh, uh, he and I several years ago did something called the Daily Move Challenge, where uh, it's five minutes of foam rolling and flexibility training, and then you've got five minutes of... Um, um, exercises and there are multiple five minutes. So if you did five minutes and you want to do five more and you want to do five more and you want to do five, those options are there and they're available for you. Uh, and we're offering that out for free. So if you have a trainer, uh, if you are a trainer and your clients just would like to have a free option, please train them online, charge them to train them online, give them free stuff. If you want to give them free stuff, that's wonderful. But then I'm offering uh, this for you and for your clients. It's free. I'm not getting anything from it. Uh, it's been about three years since I did the Daily Move Challenge, maybe longer that I think about it. Um, we're not reviving it, but we had really good content. We're going to offer it out for free. Uh, it's very NASM in its approach. So five minutes... Uh, of foam rolling and stretching, five minutes of of going into uh, some type of cardio or resistance training using a towel is the only thing that we use, just a, a, a towel. So that could be beneficial. Um, I have a client that I also use the, the NASM Edge app with, and the NASM Edge app is an online training app. So I can record the programs that I do with my clients and um, then I can deliver programs to them. And there's there's uh, setups so you can do like a video and you can just get a picture of what it looks like. You can get a kind of a text write out of what it looks like. So it just depends on if they know what it is, and if they don't know what it is, they can click on it and watch the video. Uh, and you can just do all your programming, right? So, and you can do it, you can do it as a stabilization endurance training, pro excuse me, uh, endurance training program. And if you do that, and you're NASM certified, so you're familiar with uh, NASM programming, then you can then move from stabilization endurance um, and to, uh, and into your strength endurance, and then you can move into your hypertrophy. So you've got these things that you can do online. Uh, and if you want to charge for those sessions, you can actually develop and design programs that they can do. Um, if you want to do it for free, I, I'm doing it for free with my clients. So um, they're getting free content from me. And it, it just is, it's in line based off of the work that we've been doing, right? So we do an overhead squat assessment, we do several different other assessments, and then I put in the program for them. So here's your foam rolling, here's your stretching, here are your activations, uh, here are your integrations, and then here's your resistance training program, core balance, plyo, and then resistance training. Um, you put it all in. So I use that. Other people use different programs. I know that there are people that use Trainerize, uh, which is a great program. There are other programs that are out there that are fantastic. Um, my friend Keridan, that um, you get an opportunity to listen to her as she's coaching us through online training, uses Google Docs and does face-to-face uh, -face with her iPad or her computer. So on one side, she'll have a computer pulled up and she's watching people train on that one. She needs a big screen, so it's not really done on a phone, but sometimes it's done with an iPad. And then on the other one, she's got a computer set up, and the program's written out. And so she's going through a program. She's putting in how many reps, um, what's the resistance, what are they using, how are they using it, and then she's coaching them one-on-one -on -one from the computer or from the iPad. Um, so 
opportunities there. Nah, it doesn't change the fact, though, that, man, it's getting spooky. And, you know, we're we're trying to find a way to create normalcy. And that's what the attempt for online training is and for us to continue outreaching to our clients who are also probably stressing out as well. But I know for a lot of us here uh, that are trainers at my facilities and that are trainers all over the country that are affected, you know, it's not like... We've got multiple months of rent just set up, just hanging out in the bank so that uh, we can we can pay rent when pandemics come along. That's, that's not the case. So just trying to keep some normalcy. But what I don't want is for you to keep training people. And, and you do one-on-one and you work with people in their homes. Um... That's your decision, but I will say this. If you've got training clients that are over the age of 60, regardless of comorbidities, you got anybody over the age of 60, uh, it is my suggestion that you do not go to their home and train them. Um, Because who knows? You know what I mean? Like, who knows? Who knows? And what if you do have it? I don't have it. I don't have it. Maybe, Maybe you do. Maybe you do. People are asking for play dates. We're having virtual play dates with our children right now. Our children are going online and having play dates online with Zoom or FaceTime or or Skype or whatever. They're having virtual play dates. As I was talking to to Carradine the other day, she said, uh, you know, bef- before we got on the, the the call where she talked through her her daughter had a had a virtual um, martial arts lesson. So we're shifting. We're shifting. We're we're trying to we're trying to do what we can, stay afloat, um, to make this discomfort as comfortable as possible. That's challenging. It's challenging for a lot of us. But here's what I've been telling people. I've been telling people that I'm worried, but I'm not scared. And that's the truth. I'm worried. Um I'm worried because I don't know how long this is going to last. I'm worried I don't know how long the ramifications of this are going to last once they say, hey, gyms, you can open your doors back up. I don't know what that means. I don't know who's coming back. I don't know what trainers are coming back. I don't know whose clients are coming back. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But do the best you can with your clients. Stay in contact with them. Just keep tapping them on the shoulder Keep in their ear. Keep in their inbox. Keep texting them. Keep touching base with them. Don't be annoying, but don't touch your face. Ah, man, I just rubbed my nose. Um, Don't be annoying, but be concerned. Be concerned about your clients. And if you can train them online and virtually, even if it's for free, do it if you've got a client and 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 some people's clients are like I'll do it for free and they're like no my my business partner Mark Miller at Independent Training Spot uh, no I they said I don't want you to give me these for free I want to pay you and he said okay that's fine give me your money I will take it <laughs> I don't know he's uh he's lucky like that right but. You're making your own decisions right now as to whether or not you're going to shift some business online. But whether or not you go online, make sure that you continue to check in with your clients. Uh, If you're thinking about staying open, if you've been requested or if it's been mandated in your state or your municipality that you close, don't think about it. This is not something to think about. Because that can come back on you. And again, identify what it is your core values are. And everyone's core values are to make money. But you can't do that and go against other core values. This is how we make decisions in business. This is how I identify if trainers are appropriate for training out of my facility. If there's somebody and at our core values, you don't align. You're not, uh, as the Cosgroves would say, you're not on the bus with us. Then we can't travel together. We can't go this direction together. But how do you know that? Because you've, you've got core values that you go back to that help make up your mind and identify what it is that you're going to do. And I think for, for us right now, you know, staying open, even though we could fly under the radar, 
We could. We could make more money short term. But the what ifs are not worth the short term game. To be safe, be considerate, safety first, optimize health and fitness, mutual respect, shared space, shared education. And anything that blunts that is not in line with our core values, even if we can make money doing it. So we're going to move on and close our doors at our facility. I'm hoping that those of you who are still training, still keeping your doors open, even though uh, your municipality may have said to keep it shut, just be very aware of the long-term damage that could happen if anything happens. All right, we're going to keep coming back to this for a little while. I mean, we're all being affected by it. So um, we've got a couple that are going to be released back to back. Um, one like this, just addressing the COVID-19 and another one talking about online training. So um, thank you for listening to the NASM CPT podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie and, um, you know, we're out there changing lives. So let's make sure that we're doing it for the better. Let's get out there and let's be safe, but let's keep inspiring people.